All right, everybody. Uh, welcome once again. It's the Wave Show podcast live from That Sound Studio here in London Town with a very special guest. This time, Bucky Leo from Black Egypt. Thank you for coming down. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. No, it's a, it's a pleasure and an honor. Thank you for, thank you for coming down. So, uh, how 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 you been? How's uh, you know start off easy? How how you how you been these recent times? You know, in taking one day at a time. Bravo. You Bravo. know. Um, yeah, you can't plan ahead, so you have to take one day, what happens one day, Yeah, you adjust your plans to that day. Yeah, that, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, it's been, it's been crazy in London recently, but we're, we're, yes, we're, yes. we're hanging in there, we're hanging in there. Yeah. yeah. I, I know you've, you've been busy doing probably lots of different projects, but I mean, let's, let's maybe start from, from, from the beginning, you know, how, how you, how you, how you got started and let, let's go, let's go back to, you know, to the start. So, uh. You, if you don't mind telling us, like where you were born and how you, a little bit about your background, how you grew up, and uh, all right, so, like we we'll go all the way back, you know. I, I want to. <laughs> we're gonna go all the way back, and we're gonna go. Chron- chron- how long you got? Uh, listen, we got time. L- listen, we got time. So take your time. Oh boy, we can we can go into the details, you know. But yeah. but I want to roll. The, I want to know like the real story of of Buck Leo, you know, and how you how you came about, to, you know. Till, till now, from from the beginning, you know, we'll go a little bit cr- cr- chronologically. I need to I need to know how to pronounce that properly. But. <laughs> well, uh, I'll do what I can do. I'll, yeah, I'll see what. I can yeah, of do, course, of course, know? of course, of course. What of course. comes to my head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so, you were bo- born in? Uh, I was born in Ladbroke Grove. Oh, Ladbroke Grove. All right, Ladbroke Grove. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Uh, London Town, Ladbroke um, Grove. Yeah, yeah, just. In the mangrove, I was, uh, you know, part of the Windrush generation. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, your, your parents come in originally from? Uh, Nigeria. 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 Okay. So that's the connection with the Afrobeat. Okay. You know. Okay. Okay. So they were here and, uh, you know, I uh, I was around during the uh, uprising in Labro Grove and stuff. Anyway, I was born in the UK. Yeah. And... Um, but in 1964, I went back to Lagos. Okay. Oh, no, I went to Lagos for the first time. It's not, okay. you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's in Nigeria. Yes, Lagos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lagos in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, a, b- so a big music scene up in there. Uh, well, yes. I mean, I know I've got, a, I've got a good record that's, you know, the, the best of, of Lagos. Yes. It came out on Soundwave Records. I don't know if you know that records. And there's a bunch of like 70s, 80s records that compiled together. And oh yes, that's yes. Some, that's some good funk and uh, oh, yeah. Afrobeat. Yeah, sort of they've been doing a lot of compilations yeah. now of yeah. uh, Nigerian music. But uh, yeah, so um, but I've been musically inclined when I before I went to Lagos. Okay. Uh, um, you know, I was I wanted to play the guitar. The ties actually were because I was influenced by Jimi Hendrix. Okay. I wanted to, you know, and you know, the pop thing was just coming up with the uh-huh. Beatles and yeah, Rolling yeah. Stones and so, so Jimi Hendrix was like the first big influence. Yeah, yeah. That's really what I wanted to do. Okay. Um but then I started hearing people, uh, you know, horn players like Junior Walker, yeah, you know, uh a Grover and um I thought, cool, you know, all good. And then, of course, I went to the shrine and uh, I hit Fela playing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Fela Kuti, you mean? Fela, yes. yes. Yeah, and I, I said, okay, this is it. Um, you, know, you were hooked. But I, I was hooked, but I was still open to playing guitar. Okay, okay. Um, but the first instrument that came to my possession was a saxophone. Okay. And how did that come about? How did how did you get your hands on the saxophone? I got my saxophone from um, a guy called YS. Okay. And uh, he was playing. He was in the Kalakuta Republic. Okay. Around that time, and he said, "You want to play?" Um, he gave me the saxophone and taught me my C scale. Uh-huh. And from then on, he said, "The rest is yours to go and you know develop yourself." Yeah. So that's were you like self taught or did you, did you go to any music school? Or? Later on, I did, but okay. to start with. So you know? w- how how old were you around that time when you when you picked up the saxophone the first time? And I was actually already uh, late teenage years. Okay, you know, late okay. late teenage years, and um, 
I just practiced every day. Mm. You know, practiced every day. You know, I'm at the Kalakuta Republic. Yeah. So I'm playing all the time. Even fella, fella, <laughs> fella's wife started complaining. This guy's playing all the time. Fella is trying to sleep. <laughs> and you're there practicing. And I'm there yeah? practicing. <laughs> <laughs> That's In the smart. backyard. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So it started right from there. And then, you know, uh, with the Africa 70. Yeah. Tony Allen. Yes. Um, Late great Tony Allen. Oh, yes. Yeah, rest yeah, in power. Yeah. Rest, in, rest in peace. Yeah. He, he, he saw me practicing one time, not at the Kalakota Republic, uh, somewhere else where we used to go and hang out. So and he, he, he now I wanted to know about the 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 the, 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 the republic because you, you keep saying that I, I, to 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 explain that to 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 the to, to well, our to I, our I I started associating with uh, well my his, my story with fellas goes back to about 1965. Well, we, we, we need to hear about that. T tell us tell us a little bit how. Oh, but I was a kid then. You okay, know, but I was living across the road to a place called Abad Macaulay. Okay. And, and um, across the road to my house was the Central Hotel. Okay. Where the uh, Kulalo Beatles used to play. Okay. It wasn't Afrobeat then. This is before was... we went to the States. Uh -huh. um, so as kids, we we go across the road. We're too young to go in. Yeah. But, you know, I make friends with the guy at the door. He lets me in. Oh. And, uh, you know, but it was a high life. So it wasn't anything new, but it was still nice to have live music in front of your house. Of course. Yeah, yeah, amazing. You know? Yeah, yeah. So me and my sister, we used to go. Go sneak into the little, go, to the place. And and yeah, we, we watch the band a little bit. And then, you know, because we live across the road, we don't have to go. We hear for like arguing about money or, you know, with the club owner. And then he moved. And then moved from there. He went to the, um, the Afro Sport. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but before Afro Sport, he went to Gondola. Now the Gondola is a club which was near my my school. I was at primary school. Okay. And uh, they were playing there. I never really went into the Gondola so much. But, uh, I, um, you know, used to kind of pass there. Mm -hmm. And I know that they're playing there, but then they moved from there to a place called Alago Meiji. Alago Meiji is the Afro spot. Okay. And now the Afro spot now is more of a, you know, a vibey, you know, fella started moving into Afro beat. Okay. You know, at this point. So he's still evolving there, the, the yes, Afro it's sound? Still, it's, yeah, it's still evolving. Yeah. And then, of course, after that, you know, <laughs> fella is always moving. Yeah. Went to another place in Surulere nightclub. Okay. Now the Surulere nightclub was a really kind of uh, open space, uh -huh. and it's got a big yard. Uh -huh. And uh, this is the days of uh, Nakboi, uh, Swagbe, and Paco. These these tracks, which when the Afrobeat was still evolving, uh -huh. but fella wasn't actually singing about politics back then it was more about you know everyday life and and stuff mm -hmm. and uh yeah so that got great and then he moved from there as well but at this time fella was beginning to associate with you know started uh getting high and you know the music was Developing yeah, with yeah, his yeah. development. I heard he used to love his, uh, love oh, his yes. weed. Oh yes, and J.K. J.K. Brimer, yeah, who was the man who was Fella's right hand man. Okay, he, you know, he actually showed Fella around, and things kind of developed. Started growing. The popularity it, started it, it growing. Started growing. Yeah, and then went to the final, what well, not the final club, uh, the final club that Fella had to rent rather than own and that was uh ishaga that was the shrine okay so ishaga was the, the shrine, shrine. The okay shrine. it's called yeah. the shrine uh -huh. yes yes which is uh you know Ujwe Lekba, which you you know it's a big roundabout fella's house was just off the roundabout the club was just 
about 50 yards away from his house. Just That's amazing. Everything well. conveniently, uh, conveniently placed. Placed. Yeah. You know, and that that became what was now known as Kalakuta Republic. Okay. Okay. Is yes. that that place? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. And you were like always somewhere around there, from what from what I'm understanding. I'm, okay. I'm, yeah. I, at this time, I'd already started going into Kalakuta. Okay. You know, uh, a fellow was doing a film called uh, The Black President. Okay. Which, uh, you know, so there was a lot of um, foreign uh, press people. Uh, and also in Nigeria, we had a thing, uh, a festival, a big festival. This is 1977. And the festival called uh, Festac. Okay. And Festac now was um, supported by the government. It's a big government festival. Uh, people like Stevie Wonder, uh, Cool and the Gang, mm. all these great guys. International they came. players, yeah. Um, at this time, we'd already kind of got political at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, Fela started uh, the Young African Pioneers with... Um, People like uh, Lemmy Garioku, who does the art, mm -hmm. uh, I.D. Noble, uh, Duro Ikujenyo, of mm. the Africa, the Young African Pioneers, mm. which is kind of meant to be, uh, uh, well, the name speaks for itself. Pioneers, we, we want to bring a new kind of ideology yeah. to the people. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. And, uh, but Fela was, at this time, getting vocal with... Um, with the authorities, mm. because the first act, Fela was invited to come and to be part of the committee okay. who organized the first act, but Fela wanted to use first act as a kind of revolutionary educational thing to, you know, to get change you. people's mental thing, not just music. Mm -hmm. He wanted it to be, you know, a platform for. Uh to, to spread education to and, spread and information. African ideology. Yes. You know. Yes. Uh, uh, but the the government weren't interested in that side yeah. of things. They yeah, just wanted to perform and they wanted to make. So he didn't perform. He didn't participate. Okay. And Festac. Mm. So <laughs> the funny thing is, all the great artists that came to Festac, they all ended up at the shrine. So you have people like Kul and the Gang. You have, you know. Uh, Happy, you've got all the greatest drummers who come to see the band, and they were when they come to the shrine, the atmosphere and the music. The Africa '70 was a music machine. Yes, it's a combined yes. force. Yes, yes. Sir. And uh, when they they, uh, they 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 just watching Tony Allen's feet because they don't know how he's managed to use all the limbs in his body. That's amazing to to create that. You know. That, that groove, that sound, that, yeah. That, that groove to yeah. keep it going. Yeah, yeah. And uh, to inspire, you know. So, yeah. Um, by this time, I'm, I'm well entrenched in the music mm -hmm. and, you know. Uh, so, are you already started gigs. playing with them? I or? already started doing some Africa 70 gigs. Okay. That I, I was like, you know, the mu it's like a community. So, so, that's than, around seven, 70s, late 70s. Uh, mid, 70s, mid 70s mid 70s mid 70s mid 70s so yes. you're already entrenched in, yes. starting getting entrenched in there playing gigs with them yes yes and you know uh, organizing the rallies uh the young pioneers how we uh we're gonna bring the message to the people mm -hmm. and uh, organizing seminars yeah. and, and doing stuff so it, <laughs> and i was you know I've, I was already kind of, my rhythm had changed because my, I, where I come from. You I, came from a little bit different background. I, but a different you're, background. Yeah. You know, my, my family are very religious. They, they, you know, Christians. Okay. They still are today. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I became the black sheep because I was going to the shrine and we were reading <laughs> books like, yeah. Yosef Ben Jokanan, the, you know, Black Man of the Nile, you know, great uh -huh. books. Uh -huh. uh, uh, 
you know, anthropology, dealing with our religion and yes. our culture. Yeah, the roots. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So this this was it's a, it's a way of life. Yeah, it's yeah. not really something that you go in and come out of uh, I get you. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were getting more entrenched into that whole oh, yeah. culture and vibe and, uh, and. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes. So um, unfortunately, things kind of came to a head in '79 when, of course, you know what happened. When uh, the house, the the soldiers uh, invaded Fella's house, Fella's house after he did that album called Zombie. Mm, after the zombie album. After zombie, mm -hmm. I think the the military, especially, they felt a bit disrespected or something. Yes, right? yes. They felt some kind of way. Let's the, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, so they found some excuse, some reason to to come and. Uh, Invade the house. They, yes, and they, they. Um, I was actually on my way to the Kalakuta Republic because I was living in Suruliri, but it's not far from Fella's house. And I was just going to, you know, I've done what I've got to do. Now it's Kalakuta time. I was going in, and as I was going, I saw people running towards me. Mm. And basically, I was asking them what's going on. And uh, it's... Um, it, as I looked further ahead, I saw fire, mm. and they they set fire, and people. So the whole were, place went on fire. Oh yes, oh yes. So I couldn't get anywhere near. Of course. The Kalakuta Republic when that was going on, and people got, you know. So that was my history mm. with uh, with that side of things. So I left the UK. Um, I left to come to the UK mm. um, back in nineteen eighty two. Okay. So how many? So how many roughly years did you spend over there? Oh, my all my adolescent life. All adolescent life. You know. Yeah. So uh, I was there for whoa, about thirty years, mm. 30, 40 that's, years. That's so idea, yeah. I went to primary school. Mm. I went to secondary school, mm. and then I went to the University of Calcutta. Okay. Republic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and then, <laughs> you know. Um, Things changed, and I I came to the UK and I uh, got involved with a band called High Life International. Okay. And we we taught, you know, we did gigs for UNICEF. Okay. And, that, uh, you said that was early 80s, right? 82. 82. 82. 82. 82, 82, 82 moved to back to to London. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. And um, but when I was in London, fella then passed away after a lot of things yeah i don't want to make this about you know uh what fella went through yeah. but sadly we lost him yes yeah and um femi kuti and uh his daughter and and, and femi, femi kuti and his sister they came to the uk mm. uh to do a kind of appearance and they needed a band to uh you know to do some stuff and, yeah to do some you know promotion. they were still young then mm -hmm. and uh you know we we did a show with, with my band singing fella fella's music yeah yeah and um yeah so Fem, i don't know if femi will remember that but we we had fun it was it was a good day it was yeah. almost like uh anniversary of fella's of, death yeah you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah, um, but then I kind of, uh, before that, I, the reason they called me to do that is because I've been doing Afrobeat. Yeah. You know, with I've already started uh, uh, my own band and we were doing some Afrobeat, not, not so much my compositions yeah. of Afrobeat. Yeah. And um, yeah, we we uh, promoting just the, the genre. As, as you know, Afrobeat and stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, it just moved on. I started collaborating with people. Collaborated with uh, Gaspar Lawal. We did uh, a track. It was meant to be for Warner Brothers. Mm. Uh, called Chance Future Generation. And um, you know, I just worked with a bunch of people over here. Uh, and then, of course, I was approached by the Jazz Cafe. Um, 
Oh yeah, before that, Tony Allen. Yeah. He moved. He moved also. He moved to the UK yeah, and yeah, he was staying in the UK for a little while. So yeah. we were reunited. That's cool. And uh, we did some gigs over here. Mm. But then uh, Tony moved to Paris. Okay. Uh, that's which is where he lived mm. before his sad departure. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole thing, we, we had a time together and then Tony was doing his. Own thing. His own thing, yeah, yeah. Yes, and with uh, Damien Albarn, it was collaborating. Everybody wanted to play with Tony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's you know, true. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The repercussions, yeah. Um, I mean, since since you know a little bit going back, may, maybe do you want to do you remember any like like uh, specific stories from 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 just to just to close up a little bit that fella Kuti period mm. any stories like any you know from any gigs or something like that that you remember like any any that, that, that stayed in your mind you know from, from those times everything I remember everything you know uh, for me I'm curious about that whole backstage you know backstage front in, on stage you know how that how that you know all those dynamics for me the um, I, I went to the shrine and I was part of it because we were still running the Young African Pioneers mm -hmm. and we're still associating when Fela moved from, uh, well, he had to get another place mm -hmm. and then moved to Ikeja, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, where he built his own club yeah. for the first time. Yeah. And, you know, that was a, a period of change because Tony Allen is no longer in the band. The music has changed. Okay. You know, fella started having, uh, um, you know, guitars and keyboards and playing solos and, and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, and then I had to leave and come to the UK, mm. you know. Uh, it's... What, what I remember more is the time is the 70s at the Shaga because that was the magical time. Tell me about that. Tell me about that. That was the time when, you know, the shrine, you know, when you have a fantastic band behind you. Yeah. And you've got a ranger, you know. And this is before, I'm talking about before the uh, the soldiers burnt fellas house. Yes, now, yes, yes, know. yes. Doing the movie Black President, which unfortunately they burnt um, the soundtrack, but it you know they, ba it, they banned the soundtrack. They, they burnt the the yeah. dialogue, so the visual is still around. Okay, but uh, and it, that was meant to be, you know, we were meant to kind of spread out yeah. and, and do a lot of things. Um, yeah, yeah, I. You know, at the house, a lot of things happened. There was one time when I was at the house, when police came, mm. and something to do with smoking joints, <laughs> and they beat everybody up, and oh, you know, and they, you know that fell out to go into to police station. They didn't actually arrest him at that time, but they were constantly harassed. Yeah, so like, because because of the weed then. I mean, well, no, probably of, weed was a, just an excuse for them to. to I, I get you. I get you. Yes. For, for the political statements. Yes, and, it's it's because of, of his outspokenness. Yes. Yes. And, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. For, for the weed, I, I remember. I think I was speaking to to Alan, uh, no weeks, and he was telling me that he used to have bucket buckets of weed up and up on stage and just. Oh well, I'm, I'm at the house. You yeah. know, uh, there's somebody who is actually designated to, to roll splits. <laughs> so there's a basket, like when you go into someone else's someone yeah. living room. Yeah. Uh, instead of having, you know, sweets and stuff. He had a big old basket of joints. Of joints. And so already <laughs> we just have to pick it up and... and spark it up. Oh my God. And we good. don't mix it with cigarettes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, pure, 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 yeah, of course. Pure yeah. beer. C cigarettes is a UK thing, I think. They mix it. That's oh, yeah, say. that's when I started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to mix it up. Mix it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah. I mean, that stuff is addictive. Yes, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. so there's a few of us here. Um, Stay away know. from the nicotine, kids. Stay away from the nicotine. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in the '80s, you know, um, the music had changed, like I said, mm. and 
some people that I know, like Dele Shosimi, mm. who's now here, he's also part of the Egypt 80, yes. the new generation of fellas music. Yeah. And he, you know, then suddenly we have a second back in piano, and then suddenly you have guitars taking solos. In the Africa 70, guitar never take no solo. Mm. It's only the horns and fella sing and fella plays keyboard alone yeah. in the band. Yeah. But then uh, when the Egypt 80, the music became more symphonic. Yes. You know, the band grew. Yeah, the band grew. The grooves changed, mm -hmm. and it became more like a symphony rather than you know that. Although the groove is still there. Yes, definitely you know, the groove. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's fella. Yeah. Yes. He, he writes, the, you know, his music. Yeah. And, uh, so he was like the mastermind behind like most of it, like 90% of it. or No, I would say 100%. 100%. F fella was the, the vision of the music. Fella had it. Okay. But he also had a vehicle that mm -hmm. made it possible. And that yeah. is Tony Allen. Oh, yes. Tony Allen, um, you know, actually inspired Fella to uh, to write the way he wrote, you know, musically and the grooves and yes, stuff. Yes, I you get know. you. Yeah, that ongoing groove. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's, that's great. Yeah. But Fella had 100%, you know, uh, vision. About yes, that was where, his vision. That where, was his. Where he wants the music to go. I you get know. you. Yeah, yeah. So... All right, so um, so okay, so eighty two, you 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 move you move to London. You start yeah. you start you start doing your own thing, yeah. You form yeah. a few, few different. Yes, yes. You play in a few different bands. Yeah, the the <laughs> the funny thing uh, is when when Femi Kuti actually came to the UK after Fella's departure. Yes. Um. He wasn't quite used to singing Fella's songs. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing it, you know, since I came here. Yeah. So we we had to kind of work together, uh -huh. and I have to kind of show him one or two angles. Yes. Of how it works, uh, and our, our, he grew up. That's his thing. So he knew it. It's just not performing it at the time. Um, yeah, yeah. And he came with some original songs as well, which we we learned and stuff and uh but it was just interesting to to find myself doing that yeah. and since then i then started uh i got involved with a guy called giles peterson oh yeah of course who was just a uh, worldwide fam yeah. yeah 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 that's right and the jazz warriors were already in focus uh they were doing stuff and that Acid jazz also was kind of coming from the other side as well. And, you know, to merge together to create the the jazz explosion of the 80s. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's how my I got involved with that. And, um, you know, we, we, we then started kind of more focusing on the jazz bebop side of things. Okay. Of, you know, being able to, to spread out mm -hmm. and do... Uh, uh, you know, bring the genres together. Yes. That's what I was doing. Yeah. You know, and yeah, uh, yeah we did a lot of stuff um, with the Royers, and then also uh, we got in, we we didn't start it, but I got involved with a band called the African Jazz All Stars, and that featured some, you know, uh, South African giants like Lucky Ranku, mm. Pin and Soul. Um, I think Dele Sosimi also played with that band for a little while. And we we uh, we collaborated with uh, people like uh, Roy Ayers, who came over. Legendary uh, Roy Ayers, yeah. Yeah, who's, American, yeah. Who's still around. Yeah, of course, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and um, you know, we, we, we had um, a, lo a, a lot of different great uh, guests who, mm. who, who worked with that and kind of moved. And I've just been, you know, since then, I was approached, actually, Tony Allen, um, we did a few gigs, and he said, you know, uh, the guy who owns the jazz cafe saw me with Tony Allen, and he approached me and said, do I want to do a Fela Kuti tribute? Yes. You know, uh, I said, well, of course, let's give it a try. Yeah. 
And uh, the first, this is about four years ago, the first one we did just sold out straight like away. That, yeah, yeah, of course. And so we started uh, doing uh, a schedule mm -hmm. so that we do it, let me, three, four times a year. Yeah. Uh, and each time it's just kind of built. It's just become... Bigger and bigger. Yeah, it's become more legendary yes. as a night yes. for Afrobeat. Where, yes, you know, of course. We, um, yeah, yeah. Um, in the meantime, I was also collaborating with, um, you know, um, a lot of Americans who were coming over. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that one guy in particular who actually recorded with this um, Bob Moses, okay. who played with the Brecker Brothers and Horace Silver and guys like that, is still in Boston. Mm -hmm. And actually went to the States to buy a saxophone, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And I was introduced to Bob Moses, and Bob Moses heard me and said, "Guy, we got to record. We got to record we together." Got, and yeah. we just, just like this, we came into, got into the studio. He sat on the drums. He got some musicians in, and um, yeah, we, we 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 did this album here, mm -hmm. uh, Spaceship Over. Um, Africa. Spaceship over Africa, yes. Yeah. Rakalam yeah. Bob Moses and Bakilio. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna go try to get a visual for this or for, for guys on the podcast. Yeah. You can actually see him in uh in the if you open it, you see the you can see he's he's one of those cats who's worked with everybody in in the jazz fraternity. Yeah. So um I did that and you know, then you know, I was also in the meantime trying to. 2017. All right. To to record my own album, which which I've done. Yeah, because um, one of your most known bands, Black Egypt. Yes. You want to tell a little bit our story of or a little bit story of, of Black Egypt and uh, or okay, here's yeah. Bob Moses. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, he's, he's, um, yeah Bucky here's uh, the Yeah, nice. It was kind of way out. We, we, we kind of branched out to kind of cover a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Egypt 80. Egypt 80 actually started as the source. You know, we, we got um, a grant mm -hmm. from the Arts Council to do a tour around the UK. Yeah. We did a tour. Uh, we, did, we did, you know, Newcastle, all those places. When we came back, the band was... Like when, when did it when did it form? If you don't mind me asking, uh, what the, year was that? That well, we're talking about two thousand. No, 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 no. We're talking about yeah, about two thousand and one or two. Somewhere there, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. there, there. And we yeah, two thousand and one. Because I remember it's um, <laughs> it's the same time uh, as the nine eleven war. 9-11, which yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to say because it's a sad thing, but yeah, yeah. that's the time. I mean, history is history. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, that's right. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's when you formed and you started doing yes, gigs, yeah? We, we started doing gigs. We, you know, went into studio and recorded uh, our album, which is <laughs> it's called Independent Mind. Mm. And... Um, I'm hoping to get it out because it wasn't released. Yeah. It wasn't released. It's just, it's still not released. You were just gigging with it? No, well, we do, we, yeah, we did We did some gigs, mm -hmm. um, but the album itself never really came out. Okay. And um, But then I moved on, and that's when the, uh, the Giles Peterson thing came into effect. Okay. And, so know, that was early 2000s, yeah? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know. What about the nineties? Because we, we we went all the way through nineties. Anything like nineties is <clears throat> just gigging, mm. um, you know, collaborations mm. and stuff. And any, you know. any spe specific bands you were in that time, or you want to mention, or um, any records that that come to your mind from from like nineties that you? Well, in the nineties was more kind of live gigs 
mm -hmm. were, were involved with. I get you. You know, um, African Jazz All Stars was yes. already there around, mm -hmm. so it's a kind of like a big band. Yeah. Um, Full on band, yeah. Yes, that's right. And I think I had a couple of albums out. Um, and that, the collaboration with um, with Gaspar Lawal mm -hmm. was also in the 90s. Okay. Uh, and that's that. I want to do a reissue of that mm. and stuff. Um, you know, Giles Peterson moved on from Assy Jazz Records. He went. Yeah. He went to work with a, a bigger label and yeah. stuff. Uh, started something else. Uh, and I, I just still kept... going strong. Big up Giles Peterson. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Worldwide FM. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's. He's got his own kind of setup now. Oh yeah, of course. He works yeah, yeah. with the BBC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also BBC. Yeah, shows, yeah, the, shows yeah. the BBC worldwide. Family. That's right. That's right. And um, and then I did a follow-up album called River Nile. Yes. Um, which uh, features um, uh, people like uh, Quentin Collin, uh, but the main uh, act was. Um, the drummer who with Sun Ra who came here who inspired a lot of the jazz musicians over here mm. he he started living here he, he you know and everybody wanted to play with him we we had a residency with people like Alan Weeks and, and uh, Cleveland Watkins and you know all the cats mm -hmm. we all kind of jazz cats. around <laughs> um but I managed to uh, record an album uh, as a quartet with him okay. uh, called Evolution, mm -hmm. which is out. Well, it actually just released it during the first lockdown. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, so it's, you know, you are using this lockdown to do clean out the cobwebs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I <you get>. like. <laughs> um, but then in 2000, the year 2000, oh, no. Uh, Clifford Jarvis died in 1999 mm. and then in 2000 I wanted to do a tribute to him so we, um, we got together with these guys and did an album but as uh, the same album but with a bigger band mm -hmm. so we had uh, a horn section with uh, Trevor Edwards Quinton Cullen myself and uh, Jonathan G and Sebastian Rochford and drums, um, and that I was actually gonna put that out in November, but with the way things are um, stopping and starting, it's gonna yeah. be coming out in in February. Okay. I'm put that out. Okay, look out for that, people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So right now we are just fully immersed in the. As far as life goes, mm. in the Afrobeat yes, sir. Yeah. thing, you know, uh, fellow spirit will, you know, live on forever for sure. Oh yes, yeah, it, it kind of evolves. And, yeah, and I mean, I gotta big up the album that you did, the the the, the fellow tribute that recorded Jazz Cafe. I really like that album. I need to get my vinyl copy as as I was speaking to you before the thing. You mean volume one or yes. two? Yes, the one that the Jazz Cafe. I think. Yeah, there's yeah. two. Yes, there's two. Yes. Yes. Uh, the the latest one has got songs like uh, Confusion, yeah, uh, Follow Follow, mm -hmm. and Sorrow, Tears and Blood, and stuff. Yeah, that's a great record. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And now, uh, <laughs> yeah, things are kind of on a, on a different path right now. But you know, uh, we we. No, but you're still, you're still you're still going strong, you know. I've I you probably I don't know if as I said, I might not remember. We, we met at, at the cafe. Our, our friends Shuba, big up, big up Shuba. Yes, and yes. You, you were doing a live gig there with your band. Yes, uh, yes. I was doing a little DJ set. That's There's, that's how I that's how I first. Yeah, he's 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 got um some footage of one of our gigs. Yeah, there that he uh, once in a while puts 
on social media. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah, we we we're gigging constantly. Yes, you know. Well, you, you said to me you've got you've got an upcoming gig. I think you know show is show is coming up we, every Thursday. So I think that's gonna be before. If you want to plug that as well. Well, well we are doing um, the jazz cafe on the thirtieth. 30th of December. Of December. Just a day before New Year's Eve. Get get down there. If, if it's not going to uh, be, if you manage to get a ticket, because it's probably going to be sold out, but look out for it. Yes. 30th uh, September. That's why they're uh, doing sorry, the matinee. December. We're, mm. we're doing two gigs in one on one day. Okay. So it's a, so a early gig, probably. A early gig from about four. Okay. And another gig from about seven. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a, a timetable, and it's all social distancing and all that stuff. So they can't get the full capacity. Yes, yes. In in the club. Um, so it's so it's gonna sell quick. So, guys, 30th December Jazz Cafe. You know, get that get that date in your in your calendar. Yes, that we're expecting to. Uh, if we could have a few guests, but we can't because, again, COVID and the thing is, yeah, yeah. We, we can only have a certain amount of people on stage. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's interesting, the last one we did, the place was full, mm. uh, but they were all sitting down, okay, and um, and they can't sing or dance. Oh, that's kind of weird, yeah, yeah. But there was a vibe, funny enough, people uh-huh. still. You know, there was still. Listen, you can't you can't stop the music once you hear it. Yes. It takes over people, yes. you know. Yes, yes. It, re- it really does. Yeah, and um, we're able to bring as close as you can get to the real thing. Yeah, you know, because I was there when the real thing was happening in of the seventies. Of course, and that that is what I try to portray mm-hmm. when we do these gigs, mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and that same spirit. Yes, sir. You know, uh, and so. Yeah, get down there. Get down there. <laughs> All right. So, so that's that's the immediate future. Any any other like things you want to want to promote? Any other future plans that you want you want to talk about? Yes, yes. I mean, basically, I want to. I'm working with some young people, and we want to bring some new sound mm-hmm. new flavor to the African new flavor yeah. you know because there's a two there's two different kind of genres in this area mm-hmm. there's afrobeat and there's afro beats okay now the, oh yeah yeah afro beats yeah yeah i yeah, get what you say yeah, beats yeah. it's more kind of hip not hip-hop based yeah 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 with, dance uh, funny hip-hop dance yeah. kind yeah. of stuff uh-huh, uh-huh. and um when i was in new york uh this is back i'm taking you a little bit back now that's right that's right um i was part of an award that was given uh for african music in new york and i i, I met uh an african uh, nigerian singer songwriter mm-hmm. uh Jack fashek who has sadly passed away now mm. uh, and um we you know, we, we were trying to develop something. I was actually going to be working with David Byron mm. uh, from Talking Heads. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was that was what I was doing there. Yeah. In the states, but then I had to come back here for other reasons and okay. stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, we we, and then of course I met the great Joe Henderson, who invited me to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, introduced me, took me to the Bay Area, and in the Bay Area, Tunde Williams, who was the trumpet player in the Africa Seventy Band, okay, he lives in in the Bay Area, in the Bay Area San, Fran, in San yeah. Francisco. Yeah, and it's just like being back home again. You know, <laughs> uh, meeting these guys and hanging out and yeah. stuff. Um, uh, it, it, it it was a great time and. You know, sadly, a lot of these people I'm talking about have now left us. Yeah. And, of course, the saddest one is, uh, you know, latest one as well is uh, uh, Tony Allen, Uh, who we started a band together. Mm. Uh, uh, Well, he he wanted to have a homegrown quartet. So that quartet included myself, Delicious Simeon piano, um, Tony Allen on drums, 
uh, Femi Elias on bass. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a few live gigs in the UK, and that was special. Yeah, that was very special. And uh, sadly, on you know, the last gig Tony Allen did, it was a trip. It was uh, a collaboration with someone who would passed away, Hugh Masekela. Yeah, you must have killed passed away. Is it last year or year before? Mm -hmm. Anyway, there's this album they recorded uh, together, but never quite released it. And Tony Allen was doing um, a tour. It was about to start a tour, um, and he did one last show in a place, a church in Clapton. Okay, and I. I wasn't sure if I really wanted to go to that because uh -huh. I wasn't on that project. But yeah. I wanted to go. So anytime Tony is in London, you I'm always there. Show the love, show the support. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I, I went there. All the guys, all the cats were there, you know. Uh, people who were doing uh, the Hugh Masekela project mm -hmm. and myself and, you know, all the... F People who were interested in Afrobeat and fella, you know, was there. And it turned out to be the last time that I was ever going to see Tony see Allen. Tony. Mm. And the last time I'm going to hear him. Hear him as well, yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was like Last Supper, mm. you know. It was uh, Every time I pass that church, I'm actually going to go past there when yeah. I'm done here. Um, you think about that. I, he always brings it back to me because, mm. you know, Tony Allen was like he, like my adopted father, if you like. Mm -hmm. he, he, you know, he, he always looked after me, even back in Lagos. Yeah. He's the one who actually brought me out and say, hey, Bookie Leo has arrived. Yeah. You know. Uh, That's magical. Yeah. So may his soul rest in peace, and yes, uh, yeah, may his music uh, live on. It will, it will, 100%. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Le legendary, I mean, you know, he inspired so many musicians. And oh, yes, and he still does, even beyond the grave, he's, yes, still, he's still inspiring people. Yes, sir. You know, because, uh, yeah, you, you can't get away from those beats. Nah, nah. You know. Unique, one-of-a-kind, legendary. Yes, yes. So, yeah, I, I mean, um, you were talking about stuff I was doing. I mean, apart from that, this, this album that came out uh, called Anarchy. Yeah. And it's my take on, on things the way they are right now. Okay. You know, uh, it was produced by Dennis Bovell. All right, and we also got Giles Peterson to um, to remix one of the tracks. We gotta get Dennis Bovell here, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Dennis Bovell is, uh, is is just such a legend. Yes, sir. Yes, that you know Matumbi, of course. Uh, yes, Matumbi. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, going from amazing that, producer as well. He's yeah. just yeah. Oh yes, and and then of course I got involved with the Jazz Jamaica. Yes. Uh, when I was working with uh, people like uh, Bami Sa Bami Rose, you know Sa Tan Tan Eddie Tan Tan Alan Weeks. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, and Big that, up Alan Weeks. If, if you missed the podcast, check out the podcast with Alan Weeks. He's oh a, yeah, a, uh, yeah. I saw, I, I saw something that yeah. he was talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, he was bigging up the, you, so the, the, <laughs> there's a connection there right there. The, the lineage of the music. Yes, you know? sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that is such a special thing for me mm. uh, to be involved with, you mm. know, uh, those cats. Yeah. Um, and we, 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 we play, we, you know, if not for the lockdown, we, we, of course. we are everywhere. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, anybody want to pick up before before we before we close this off? I like uh, to big up you guys for doing this. No, nah, no. Nah, um, listen, for, for me, uh, it's a, it's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you very much, very very much for coming down. I mean, it's Yo, uh, uh, we, we we might need to do a part two sometime. You know, yeah, because, man. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm always you know up for talking about these things because they need to be. Uh, they need to be out there. Exactly. 
record exactly. it. They yes, need, sir. They need to be, because uh, the future generation, they need to know what happened exactly. before their time. Exactly. And, uh, That, that's that's one of my main focuses also because I, I me personally I'm, a, I'm a, like a history buff and I'm a music you know I'm a mm. music lover mm. um, so for me I, I love to to dive into the, this, the history you know how how everything came to where to where it's at now and you know it's, oh, yeah. you, you can't go anywhere without knowing your roots so you, you need to know that history oh, yes. to to move on forward you know oh yes yes so so I, I really appreciate you taking your time and coming and coming down and and sharing a little bit of your story I know this you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really do would like to pay tribute to, but the, um, you know, to people who have left us, people like Lucky yes, Ranku, a South African, amazing South African guitarist, mm. Pin and Soul, a great singer like Huma, um, um, what's her name, uh, Maria Makeba. You okay. know, she she she's kind of Pin and Soul came from that. And uh, yeah, uh, I like to pay tribute to, of course, the spirit of Tony Allen, Fela Nicolas Bokuti, which I is, which is my life, really. Yes, sir. It's my, it's it's uh, what do you call it? It's your lifestyle. Yes, sir. You know. Yes, sir. Uh, so it's not just an involvement. Um, nah, he, he shaped the, definitely a lot of people's oh, yes. lives. And, oh yes, yes. And his music is obviously will inspire forever and oh, will yeah. we'll, we'll live on forever. We'll, we'll live on forever, and we we uh, you know we the young African pioneers have a duty to actually uh, put that message forward and the message of unity. Yes, sir. And uh, the message of togetherness yes sir you know we need to put that forward especially at times like these yeah that's what know? we need yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we need we need hope we, yeah you know that things are gonna get and, better. and we need this music to, to keep staying alive you know because the government the government may not think so you know that the arts and the music is not important but without it you know the spirit will die you know well they i'm, I'm sure they don't think without it uh, they think we can do it through My social media it's not enough yes. people need to be there yes you know they they know that you've got to feel it yes it's like the course. theater otherwise yeah. why would they have the theaters in the west end yeah if people can sit at home and watch it that's exactly. why they have the theater so yeah. people can go and people they have the clubs the running scots mm -hmm. you've, you've got jazz cafe you got all these places yeah. People need to be there to feel the togetherness, and that's so important. It might have been underrated, but it's so important for our development. Yes. We, we, we can once it's been like kind of taken away from us. Now we can really appreciate it. I mean, me too. I, oh, yeah. I, I feel like that. You know, once you know, going to a live gig. You know, you can hear an album on CD. That's fine. You can buy those records, obviously, and, and buy you can those stream CDs. Stream on, on uh, Zoom and yes, do all that but stuff. But there's nothing like that live feel. It's 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 a it's a different energy, you know. When it you is. connect, it's you know you it can is. feel the you can feel the energies. It you know? is absolutely, absolutely. Mm. And one guy that really also, I mean, I mean, there's many who inspired me. Of course, me. John Lennon. Is a hero for me. Yes, sir. Jimi Hendrix is a hero for me. Yes, sir, of course. And then Marvin Gaye is a hero for me. I mean, mm. I, if I go into it, I, I just won't. You know, there's so too many of them. John Coltrane, yeah. Dexter Gordon, yeah. Charlie Parker. Yeah. Where you know, uh, but where we were coming from, we were trying to what we're trying to do. We've come with a brand new kind of uh, genre, which puts us on a level where something genuine yes. can be actually heard. Mm -hmm. That it's original and it's as good as anything out yeah. there. Original and real, you know. It's yes, just, yes, yeah. yes. So, uh, Afrobeat forever. Afrobeat forever. They, <laughs> you hear it first hand, yeah. You hear it first hand, hear it. Well, again, Big, big, big thanks. It was a true pleasure and an honor to have you here. Um, Thank you. Hopefully we'll get, we'll get you back on. Yes, yes, yes. Um, once again, legendary Bucky Leo. Check out all the links for his new works and for, you know, from all his stuff is going to be down in the subscription, uh, in the description, sorry, below. Yeah, big thanks everybody for tuning in. The Wave Show podcast from That Sound Studio here. We out of here. Big thanks again. 
What's up, Again, everybody? It's Tut- my pleasure for being here. And everybody, keep together, love each other, stay strong, and um, be kind. And check out the music. There you go. Love and unity. Guys, see you later. Yeah, tune in for the next one. Bless up, everybody. <laughs>